Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today, I, honestly, I'm kind of excited because we are going to be getting into the basics of what might be my new favorite 3D slicing software. So let's go ahead and get into this video. Bamboo Studio. That is what we're talking about today, and honestly, I... I have to say, this might actually be my new favorite 3D printing slicer software because I, what I love about it, okay, let me get up on my soapbox here. What I love about this software, you can be an absolute novice. And I mean, you just get a brand new 3D printer and you've got your P1P or whatever it might be, and you just throw in your file, hit slice, send it to the printer. I mean, it's just that easy. And you can be that novice and be able to get really good results. You just got to be able to know how to load your filament and connect your printer. And it's the steps to go through that process is so easy. You don't have to save it to an SD card, move it over. It just everything connects. And you, you can save it to an SD card and print off of that. But I mean, the wireless feature is amazing. So I think that's what I love about it is you, you can have zero knowledge about this and within 20 minutes be printing something and on the other side of that fence if you have been 3d printing for a while like me i have been using cura i've been I, i've used all of the slicers i know all of the settings i know what does what and when it comes to this software i i can dive deep into this software and that's what i really like about it because there's certain things when it comes to their preset profiles and i'm just like uh, I know better. I am not going to do this because I don't want the, say, the infill to be that dense because it's just wasting filament. Or, you know, the supports, I'm like, ah, I think I want to add a little more supports here. But, honestly, you don't have to. There are some things that I'm just like, uh, the defaults are good. And don't get me wrong, I like the defaults, I use the defaults. But I'm still going in and I'm tweaking things here and there. Just, you know, I, I like to get in the weeds. But for this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through the basics. I'm still going to get a little bit in the weeds because I want to show you a certain thing here and there that I think is really important to know and understand. But for the most part, this is just bare bones basics. How you can get your files in and how you can slice stuff and where some of these different settings and features are in the software that a lot of people might not know about. So let's go ahead, jump over to the computer and get started in Bamboo Studio. Now before we get into it, I just wanted to show you, I am using Bamboo Lab version 1.7.3.50. So if you're watching this in the future, first, hello from the past. Second, if you notice anything different, that's probably why, because you might be running a lot newer of a version. So let's go ahead and close this and get started. Now the first thing I want to help everybody understand is this works a lot differently than Cura. So if you have got a background in Cura or even Prusa Slicer, this works a little bit different. Now I will be making some more videos where I'm showing you like the nitty gritty details and how to really get the most out of your settings when it comes to your P1P, P1PS, or your X1 Carbon. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing is, is we're going to go all the way up here to our top left where it says File. This is going to give you your drop down to where you can create new projects, you can save projects, import and export different files and also just quit the program if you don't want to just click the X over there. Now the next thing is this little drop down arrow. So when you click on the arrow, you'll get this little list. So first you have edit. This is where you can do your typical editing settings. So you can copy, paste, undo, redo. And the nice thing is, is all of these commands are pretty much the exact same of like any other program, like even Microsoft Word from cutting and copying and pasting. Now, if you want to select all, it's control A. To deselect all of the things you have selected is escape. You can clone selected if we actually had something here on the build plate. You can just hit clone and it will duplicate it for you. 
Next is Vue, and this is honestly one of my biggest complaints about this software. And that is, I wish there was just something like there is in Cura and some of those other 3D slicer softwares where you can see like a cube and you can click and spin it and actually go around and turn your model easily uh, by looking at your build plate instead of clicking and dragging. Like, I can click and drag and move this all around, but I really wish there was something here to where I could just click, you know, left view, right view, like right here. Maybe that will come in the future. But for now, all you have to do is come up here to view, and then you can see here are the controls. So if I hit control zero, it will actually bring me to my default view. And like control one is a top view. And this is a view I use a lot. So I've just had to learn the controls instead of clicking a button like I do in Cura. Now, if you come down here to view again, you can see all of the different commands that you can use to jump to those different, you know, point of views. All right, so you can see that I brought in this Koopa shell right here, and it, it's obviously not fitting on the build plate because these two are too big, and we will get to that issue in just a minute. But first, let's come back up here and let's look at the view, and we are on perspective, and what that means is we actually have perspective on our viewing angle on our slicer. So what we want to do is we want to remove perspective and we want to have an orthographic view. And you want to come right here and use orthogonal view, even though it's technically an orthographic view. And that is essentially removing any of the perspective. So it is actually perfect. So you can see here that we have removed that and this is really helpful when it comes to dealing with any type of shape that might look like it's overlapping the build plate. So let me just real quick, so let me actually rotate this upside down for you. And this will give you a really good idea. So if I am going to move this, say right here on the edge, so we know that's right on the edge. And if I go back to perspective and I click on perspective, look at that. Does that look like it's actually going to fit on the build plate? No, it does not look like it's going to fit in any way, even though this will fit on the build plate. It's that view, and we don't want to be using perspective. So we come back up here to view, and right here it says, and that's where we want to use orthogonal view, which is orthographic. Uh, I have only ever seen it called orthographic in every other 3D program I've ever used. So forgive me if I keep calling it orthographic. So I'm going to click that and then you can see all of the perspectives gone and this one would fit on there. So be sure to click on that and make sure you're using the orthographic view. Now the next one is, I don't know, I like it. I kind of like it and that is show labels. Now, when you click show labels, you will actually see these little boxes and it will give you the names of the files. And I honestly, I, I kind of like this setting because I know in the past on other slicer softwares, I have had like a dozen different pieces and parts on my print bed and I lose track of what is what. Especially that you're like looking at like maybe arms, okay? I'm like, I've got two arms here. Are they two right arms or do I have my right arm and left arm and like that is really where this thing shines I think and I, I kind of like it but I do like that I can turn it on and off and one of the other things that I really like about it is when you have this activated you can actually see which one you have selected so if I click on my top you see that orange box around the actual name tag and now bottom now I realize not everybody will like this feature, but I, I honestly, the more I use it, the more I like it. Now when I was learning this program, I was honestly disappointed. I was disappointed in just really this one stupid thing. And that is, I could not see where my overhangs were. And in Cura and in other slicer softwares, it will actually show you where your overhangs are. And for those of you that don't know what an overhang is, 
That's basically the areas of your 3D model that you need supports for. So it will actually create your 3D supports right here if it needs to be supported because we can't just print out in midair. Like if you see right here, this is definitely going to need a support because it can't just start printing in the middle of air. It has to print on something. So when I first came in here, I was looking around and doing some digging and people said like, well, it just doesn't have it. I just didn't believe it because it's such a vital thing when it comes to 3D printing. And obviously I found it and it's right here under view under show overhang. And when you click that, look at that, look at that beautiful red. Now, this is showing you all of the areas where you would need to be printing supports. And this is, it's just great to have. So I would recommend when you first open your software, come over here, make it orthographic view and show overhangs. Those two things absolutely should be done. Now the next thing is preferences. Now when you come into your preferences, you can just click the preferences and this has a bunch of different things and you can see. One of the things I really like is it has auto back every 10 seconds and it will save up to 18 of them and then it'll clear out and just keep overwriting. Now I like this. Some of the other things is show the tip of the day. I, I honestly, I've been reading these. There's some very good information when it comes to these tips of the day because it goes to their documentation, which they have phenomenal documentation. It is up to date and it is great. Now, one of the things that I like to do and I actually changed it and it's been kind of weird for this tutorial is I keep mine in dark mode. So I am just gonna go ahead and click this and lo and behold, there we go. I, I honestly, I just like working in dark mode. I'm used to it because this is how I work on all of my slicers. I don't like the bright screens. So that's really it. And if you wanna just read th through here, you can actually change your unit metrics, your location, I'm in North America, and I'm speaking to you in English. So obviously you do not want me trying any of these other languages. And when you're done, you just hit close. Now, the next thing is we have our help. And our help is great because they have the setup wizard that you can add new printers. Now I do recommend you guys taking some time and going through the keyboard shortcuts because if you are in this a lot, it, it saves a lot of time and it just makes you more efficient and it makes you faster in the program. And also if you're wondering what version you have, you can just click about Bamboo Studio right here. And like I've already shown you, this is the version I'm running. And I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Now, obviously right here, this is your save. So I could hit save right here and it would save this project. And then you have your undo and redo button. So I could undo what I just did and redo what I just did. Moving down to the next bar. So all of that was just for these little icons. Now, moving on to this next bar, and this is really where it gets a little crazy because first you have your home. Your home is where you can access recent projects, you can open up a project or create a new project. And the other thing that I really like, just because I am a detailed person, I like to understand things, the user manual. You can click this and you can go through the different sections here and learn about this software and your printer. So it, it's actually, it's really nice because it will take you to all of their documentation at the Bamboo Lab Wiki. And this thing, I'm not kidding, I love this. I have spent so much time reading on their website. They have example videos of showing you things. And I mean, really folks, if you want to up your game and you have one of these printers, you need to be in here because it's the only way you're going to get better is just having better knowledge of how your printer works. And they, I mean, I really enjoy how Bamboo Lab has just documented everything and they try to teach you as much as possible. You just have to be willing. So after the home, I'll get off my knowledge soapbox now and I'll come over here to prepare. And that's where we were at. 
Prepare is where you're doing all of your editing and tweaking, positioning, rotating, scaling, all of that stuff. This is where you're actually working. Now, when you're done with that, you come to preview. And preview, right now, guess what? We don't have anything here to preview. And that's because we didn't slice our files. We have to slice our files before we actually can see the preview, And but we'll get to that. Then we have device, and this is accessing your 3D printers. So if you have different printers, this is where you can access it. And I'll give you a little sneak peek right now. I am actually printing a file for an upcoming video right now. Uh, I doubt you can tell what it is at this stage, but it's actually printing right now and I have a live feed of it. And I'm not near my 3D printer right now, and that's one of the things I absolutely love because it's a few floors below me right now and I can check my 3D printer to make sure everything's working out. You can also check your status of your SD card, your, you can update the, the firmware, and you, you can just do so many things here. But I don't want to get into this too much right now, but this is where you can actually access your device and know the status of your printing. All right, real quick. I just gotta say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. If you wanna be like these amazing people, you will also get exclusive access to my behind the scenes content as well as access to my private Discord channels where we talk about 3D printing, painting, fixing our 3D printers and all the fails that we might have and how to get around them. But it's a great community, and it's growing every day. If you're interested, I'll go ahead and put a link below for you. Other than that, let's get back to this video. So, when it comes down to it, this is our build area. I can press on my middle mouse button and move around, and that's my pan. I can zoom in with my roller wheel and zoom out. The other thing is, is I can right-click on my mouse and that will also pan. So not only my middle mouse button does this, but my right click does too. Now my left click, this is my orbit. So I can spin around my 3D models by just left clicking. Now the key here is you have to click in one of the outside areas, not on your model, because if I do that on my model, you can see what's happening. But off of my model, it's perfect. So when you click on a model and you left click and drag, that is moving it around. And you wanna make sure that you don't accidentally move it when you're you know, trying to orbit because I've already done that a few times. Now, if you've noticed, we have been on this build plate and the, this shell right here is not going to fit. Now, this is one of the really nice things that I like. You can have multiple build plates. And all you have to do is click Add Plate. Now, if I wanted to bring in another model, I could actually just click Add right here. And then this will give me my dialog box to be able to open up another model. So you don't have to just do it with File Import right here. You can actually just do it right here. And if you've noticed, right here it says Add, and in brackets it says Control-I. But if I come over here to Import, right here, control I. So that is the same, same function. So you can either import it or you can import it here. Now, once I click on add plate, you saw that we've got this extra plate. Now, this is the nice part. So both of these aren't gonna fit, so guess what? Boom, boom. <laughs> guess what? Now we have two prints and we're gonna be able to get these just fine. Now the one thing that I like to do is I will click on my model, I will right click, and it gives me a nice menu. And this is something that you can go through at a later time. And I always like to center my model. But when I center my model right now, something's gonna happen, not what I want to happen. And let me just show you. Center. Yup, it centered it all right. It just centered it on the wrong plate. So you have to pay attention because this got me early on. I mean a lot you have to pay attention to your plates. So if I click on this plate, now this is the active plate, and I could click on this model over here, right click, and I could hit center. 
and there we go now it's going to be centered so you have to make sure whatever you're doing you have actually got your plate selected that you want to work on and then do whatever you're wanting to do like center so now I've got both of these centered on my plate and they are ready to go now one thing I think is worth mentioning just in this basics is also how you can auto orient different models so if yours wasn't completely flat on the bottom like mine you can actually click on your model and click this and it will actually look at the best way to be able to flatten your model now I've had pretty decent success with this but on the other hand I've gotten a few that are like oh if I printed that that would be a really bad print so you still have to use your judgment it is really nice to give you an idea of maybe how you can position it but I really wouldn't recommend like leaning on this heavily so real quick just to show you how a range works so I took the turtle shells I scaled them all down and I just have them sporadic now all I have to do is click this button auto rotate for arrangement sure allow multiple materials on the same plate that is up to you if you have an AMS you can actually determine and then avoid extrusion calibration region and for those of you that don't know what that is that is this area down here because that is where it's actually getting the calibration to get ready to start 3d printing now all I have to do is I can set my spacing of how far apart I want them from each other and then hit arrange and then that's it so you can see it's actually just spend them and it's trying to get them as close as possible and you might be wondering why does it need to be close as possible like why can't I just have them like over here and over here like this that is because if you have everything as close as you physically can together that is removing the travel distance of your nozzle from one point to another because think about it over a hundred layers of it keep coming over here and then coming back that is actually wasting time it might be milliseconds but it's still wasting time and it will add to your 3d print and just to show you let's go ahead and I'm going to delete all of these and I'll show you here I'm gonna slice this and then it's going to tell me that this is going to take 52 minutes and two seconds now if I come back here to prepare and I move these close together remember 52 minutes and I slice it again now it's 50 minutes and 58 seconds it's not a lot but it's still it did change the time so you want to be able to have your objects close together when you have multiple objects just something to keep in mind so now we're back to our shell I've got everything positioned how I want to position it and I'm ready to slice my file and send it to the printer so what we're needing to do is just come over here to the right side and click slice now you can do slice all or just slice this specific plate and remember the darker plate is the one that we're talking about so for this I'm just gonna slice all then I'm going to hit slice all and there we go so it sliced everything and it's telling me that it's using one type of filament here's the amount of filament it's going to be using in meters and in grams then the total time so to print all of this it was going to take 11 hours and 33 minutes but if I want to get individual stats all I have to do is click on one of these in the top left corner so it's either the top shell or the bottom shell now I can see a breakdown of the percentages of how much is a top surface, how much is the bridge, how much is it traveling. And this breaks it all down and into and this breaks it down into time increments, which are is really nice to be able to see that, you know, I'm spending a ton of time on my infill. So maybe I should like trim my infill down. These are just some of the things to be looking at when you're 3d printing now once we're here in preview I think it's worth mentioning this bar on the right and this bar on the bottom now the one on the right is layer by layer this is the entire layer that it's 3d printing so it is actually printing 445 layers with this quality that we're printing now if I come down here 
and I come down a little bit, let's say to layer 221, then I come to this bar right here, I can actually see how it's actually 3D printing. And the crazy part is that they threw in, you can straight up see the G code and how it's running, which is remarkable. So you can actually see what line code is happening at that specific moment. So you can just play through and see how it's actually going to be 3D printing this. But this is really handy to just see how it works. So if you start messing with a lot of your settings and you want to see what it's physically doing and not see it on the printer, this is the best way to do it. So you can just go layer by layer and then you can see how it's going to 3D print. Now once you have your file all ready to go, you can actually hit print plate. And if you hit print plate, then you can actually select what filament you're using if you have an AMS. If not, you're not going to have this option. Then you can select your printer and you can decide whether you want it to, the bed to level, the flow calibration, a time lapse video, and enable your AMS if you have one. Then you just send it to the printer. You can also label this print if you want to. So I could call this top shell. And there we go. So there's top shell, and I could send it, and that's it. But I've got something printing right now, so I can't really send it. There's a few other things that you need to just have a, a, at least a little bit of an understanding of. First is you got to make sure you're selecting your right printer. So if you have multiple Bamboo Lab printers, then guess what? You will have multiples here because this is where you can add and remove printers. The next one is your plate type because there are different types of plates that you can have when you're 3D printing. I am on a PLA plate or the cool plate and I am just going to click that to select it. Now the other thing is if you have an AMS this is where this would show up and the AMS is where you can have the multicolor filaments. Now I'm not going to go into depth about the multicolor filaments and the AMS in this video but I'm just letting you know that this is where it's at. Now the one thing about Bamboo Studio is they have got their settings honed perfectly for their 3D printers. You really don't have to do much. I have messed with the settings and gone a little deep in the weeds trying to mess with different things. And honestly I'm just trying to break my printer and see what it can do and what it can't do. And I don't recommend everybody doing that, but I do recommend everybody checking out the settings that they have. They have presets that are already built in, and I love them. I have used all of these on different projects, and I have found that they, they just work, and they're really nice. So if you want a 0 0.08 millimeter layer height, you can get one right here on the extra fine. Or a 0.28, which is an extra draft, and this one is a very thick layer height. So you want to make sure you've got the right settings that you're looking for. So if you want something with a lot of detail and you don't want to see layer lines, extra fine. It's just going to take a lot longer. Or if you want to be able to get something printed quickly and you really don't care about layer lines, then the draft mode works great too. Now, the next thing is important is you want to go through these tabs right here. So this shows me my layer height, my seam position, then I can go into my strength. The strength shows me wall count. Now, they call it wall loops, but for those of you that have been 3D printing in different slicers, this is your wall count. They just say loops, and loops kind of make sense because it's how many rings around it's actually giving you. Then the important part down here is our sparse infill. This is our infill percentage and our type of infill. Now there are a lot of cool different types of infill when it comes to Bamboo Studio. There's a lot to choose from here. All of them have their pros and cons, but when it comes down to it, when it comes to an infill, I have found 15 is a lot sometimes, and I don't need 15, especially for something like this you know what, probably a 5% infill and I would be perfectly fine. So if I slice everything again and then I try to see my shell, and you can see at 5% there's my new infill and I really don't think I'm going to need any other type of infill besides that because even right at the top 
it's going to be able to catch and I'm not too worried about it. So I don't always go at a 15% infill. That is what it does by default, but you kind of got to use your best judgment because sometimes you just don't need to print that and all of that extra infill is wasted filament unless you need it to be strong. Now if we switch to the 0.2 millimeter strength, you can actually see that look how dense that is. And that is just making your 3D prints extra strong. And it's at a 25% infill. That means 25% of the inside is actually filled with plastic. And 75% of that is filled with air. Just a way to think about it. Then the other thing that I want to definitely talk about is supports. Now you want to enable supports if you have overhangs. Now there are a few options. You can do normal, tree, normal, manual, or tree manual. So if you're painting on your supports, this is the manual or you have tree. If you're just getting started, I really recommend doing either normal auto or tree auto. I'm my preference is the tree auto I just like what it does and when it comes to your threshold a 30% is pretty good honestly now when it comes to build plate only this is really where Now the next setting is build plate only, and build plate only means do you want your tree supports only coming off of the build plate? If that is the case, watch this. We're going to slice this again, but this time it's not going to actually have any supports here because a tree support can't come over here and work its way all the way over here. So if you have this unchecked, your supports are actually going to be 3D printed on top of your model in some parts, just like it was doing here. So you can see that it's actually 3D printing this on my actual model. Now, it's not going to stick because you can see that there is a slight gap there, but it could create rough marks or anything like that, and it's just, those are the risks you take because sometimes you just need supports and they need to print off of your model. Now the next settings that are important to understand is in other. Then we have brim and brim is on auto and that's what this blue is and what brims do they just help with adhesion to your build plate. I recommend brims. They're not hard to take off and honestly the benefit you get out of them is well worth the cleanup. And those are the main things you need to know before you start 3D printing. So once you're ready to go, all you got to do is hit print plate just like we went through and send it to your printer. So I hope this video has helped you get a good understanding of just the basics of this software. Now, this is going to be just the first video of many. I'm going to be diving into the weeds when it comes to this slicing software to really help you even get better prints than what you're getting now. Because I have already found with a few tweaks, I mean, these printers can get some beautiful, beautiful results. So if you're watching this in the future and the videos are done, I'll put them right here for you. Other than that, I wish you a great day, and I'll see you in this next video.